Carne Corso 101, man's best friend. There are uncountable great dog breeds that are very popular for all people, and really there's no breed that's better than the other, given the fact that they're all just different and may need different approaches when it comes to training them. Welcome again to Dog Law, and in today's video, we're looking at a breed that, although it's not as popular as others, it's one of the breeds that, in a heartbeat, can become every owner's best friend. The Cane Corso. We're looking at everything you should know, such as origins, behavior, health, and specific tips and pieces of advice if you're interested in acquiring one of these guys in your family. Before we dive in, can you guess two similarities between a Cane Corso and a miniature Schnauzer? Comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Okay, now that we're all set, let's dive in. The Cane Corso is a Mastiff dog, originally bred in Italy as watching, herding, guarding and hunting dogs. His massive size, powerful strength and surprisingly good balance make this the dog version of the bouncer guys that are seen outside of clubs. Being trained and socialised at an early age, Cane Corsos are protective dogs and tolerant with children. Not to mention that they are considered by many as the smartest, but strangely at the same time the most stubborn breed of all Mastiffs. Can you guess how that would be possible? Don't worry, we'll dwell more on that later on. Before we dive in completely, there's something important to learn about this breed. If you're planning on buying a Cane Corso, note that not all breeders are equal, and not all Cane Corsos are either. There are pure bloodlines that are traced back to the very first that came over here in America. The first thing to know about Cane Corsos is the statement held by experts, which they assure us are two separate lineages of this ancient breed that have developed over the years. The traditional Cane Corso and the non-traditional Cane Corso. The traditional Cane Corsos refers to the group of Corsos directly descendant from the first dog that arrived in America from Italy back in 1989. The All-American Corsos, as some have agreed to call them, are called the true Corsos because of their Italian bloodline. This line of Corsos can cause more impact visually due to their impressive musculature and bigger bones, which is very common in all Mastiffs. On the other hand, we have the non-traditional Corsos, which was the same population of Corsos originally from Italy. The difference here relied on some breeders that began crossing other breeds into purebred Corsos, resulting in a new mixed genealogy. The similarity between traditional and non-traditional Cane Corsos is high because they were bred to cross with other breeds as large as them, such as Boxers or Great Danes. This mixed breeding resulted in a variation of many aspects from the traditional Cane Corso. This new litter showed a taller and skinner body skeleton compared to the traditional lineage, making them more agile and lighter than their first cousins. We don't mean non-traditional Corsos are a problematic breed to own just for the fact that they're mixed. Like all mixed breeds, they can be loyal and eager to please their owners. Many breeders are trying to give away mixed breeds as traditional Cane Corsos, and again, while there's nothing wrong with a mixed bred, you should be able to adopt the dog you want for your household. The roots of this breed go back all the way to the ascendant, the Canis Pugnax. This was a breed of war dogs in ancient Rome used to attack and disarray the vanguard of the enemy lines. Because of their size, strength and resistance, the Cane Corsos were bred to follow similar steps as they were trained to hunt bulls and as herding dogs back in the 16th century. Cane Corsos were so effective as vigilant and guard dogs that their name comes from Cohorse, which is Latin for guardian. However, some experts suggest that they were originally named Cortos, which is a Greek word used to describe the attribute of looking after people and animals. The stature is about the only true menacing aspect of the Cane Corsos. Their large head and marked muscles make them intimidating hounds for every intruder. Average male Cane Corsos can reach 27 inches from paw to shoulder and weigh 105 pounds, while females average height is 24 inches and weigh around 94 pounds. As the breed evolves, larger Cane Corsos are seen that surpass and outweigh these numbers. For example, in the last 10 years, there have been dogs that have weighed 170 pounds, but don't let the weight, size and muscular body fool you, because Cane Corsos are surprisingly agile and fast, making them ideal watch and guard dogs. Cane Corsos are brave, well-tempered and trustworthy, making them reliable partners to have around you. They are both protective and gentle by nature at the same time, creating a strong bond with children. So don't be surprised if you see your Cane Corso following the youngest everywhere they go around the house. They are a bit suspicious around strangers, but don't generally act aggressively, especially if trained well. 
While being very good as watch and guard dogs, they don't tend to excessively bark at noise. By the way, that's one of the aspects they have in common with the miniature schnauzer. Training them can be very tricky. Remember what we said about them being as intelligent as every breed gets, but are labelled as stubborn, and this is because of their intelligence. Canna Corsos generally learn both good and bad habits applying both to their routines. This is the reason some experts recommend only owning Canna Corsos for experienced dog owners that have trained and treated similar breeds of large and highly intelligent dogs. Another reason to be trained by experienced people is in case they show their dominant or alpha nature if not socialized and trained properly. In other words, they could get the better of a first-time owner, resulting in problematic behavior. Canacorsos are not apartment dogs. They do better when they have a lot of space to run around and exercise, though they don't need extensive lengths of time exercising. So you need to keep in mind if you're an active person that likes going out on a daily jog or walk, the Canacorso is right for you. Once you go out with them, even if you have trained them well, you should go with a leash in case they feel the urge to chase a jogger or another animal. They're generally friendly and comfortable with all members of the household, although they generally form a strong bond with only one person in the family. That being said, canicalsos are less likely to cause problems when they're hanging around with someone and aren't left alone for long periods. They become bored, and this can evolve into unwanted destructive behavior when they feel alone. This, however, can be controlled at an early age. If you start leaving your young can of corsos for short periods of time, they'll learn to be on their own as they grow. If you want to pull off something like this, you'll need to have the time and patience to train them, since they could take time adjusting to this thought. Of course, there are exceptions of dogs that won't accept being left alone and will always have the need to be with at least one person in the house. Like all animals, can of corsos can be comfortable around other dogs provided they're properly socialized, but they tend to chase cats if they spot one. They're very playful as puppies, and this can last for a while since they reach maturity at a late age, generally around four years old. After this age, they are considered to be serious dogs. Don't misinterpret this and think you'll get a boring dog after a while. Even the most serious dogs will enjoy playtime nearly every single day. If we're talking about health, we should discuss what they're going to be eating. Can Corsairs do well on high quality dog food? Some dogs are more likely to get overweight than others, so be alert about your dog's weight level and daily calorie consumption. Keep in mind this same aspect when it comes to treat training. While it's always okay to compensate them while training them, excessive consumption of treats can also lead to Can Corsairs being overweight. Like other large sized dogs, Can Corsairs can suffer from hip dysplasia, a malformation that could cause crippling lameness and painful arthritis of the joints. On average, Canacorsos can live between 10 and 11 years. Canacorsos shed moderately, they have a short, dense coat that doesn't need to be groomed, but that being said, it's positive to brush them three times a week. A downside from the Canacorsos is that they drool quite a lot. We don't recommend you get this breed if you're annoyed by slobber spots on your furniture or your clothes. Canacorsos develop better on wide spaces and like to walk at least twice every day and are above average energetic dogs that need frequent exercise. They answer incredibly well to activities that enhance and stimulate and test quick reasoning, especially smell and intelligence related games and activities. Our ultimate recommendation is for newbies to train a little with other breeds of dogs before adopting a can of Corso to the family, but once you feel their loyal and protective nature, you'll find the best friend you are looking for in a canine. That was today's video folks, as always you're welcome to comment below and tell us the topic you want us to cover next. See you next time.